August 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Esther chapters 5 and 6 from the Old Testament. It so happened that on the third day Esther put on her royal attire and stood in the inner court of the palace, opposite the king's quarters. The king was sitting on his royal throne in the palace, opposite the entrance. When the king saw Queen Esther standing in the court, she met with his approval. The king extended to Esther the gold scepter that was in his hand, and Esther approached and touched the end of the scepter. The king said to her, What is on your mind, Queen Esther? What is your request? Even as much as half the kingdom will be given to you. Esther replied, If the king is so inclined, let the king and Haman come today to the banquet that I have prepared for him. The king replied, Find Haman quickly so that we can do as Esther requests. So the king and Haman went to the banquet that Esther had prepared. While at the banquet of wine, the king said to Esther, What is your request? It shall be given to you. What is your petition? Ask for as much as half the kingdom and it shall be done. Esther responded, My request and my petition is this. If I have found favor in the king's sight, and if the king is inclined to grant my request and perform my petition, let the king and Haman come tomorrow to the banquet that I will prepare for them. At that time, I will do as the king wishes. Now Haman went forth that day pleased and very much encouraged. But when Haman saw Mordecai at the king's gate, and he did not rise nor tremble in his presence, Haman was filled with rage toward Mordecai. But Haman restrained himself and went on to his home. He then sent for his friends to join him, along with his wife, Zeresh. Haman then recounted to them his fabulous wealth, his many sons, and how the king had magnified him and exalted him over the king's other officials and servants. Haman said, Furthermore, Queen Esther invited only me to accompany the king to the banquet that she prepared, and also tomorrow I am invited along with the king. Yet all of this fails to satisfy me as long as I have to see Mordecai the Jew sitting at the king's gate. Haman's wife Zeresh and all his friends said to him, Have a gallows seventy-five feet high built, and in the morning tell the king that Mordecai should be hanged on it. Then go with the king to the banquet contented. It seemed like a good idea to Haman, so he had the gallows built. Throughout that night, the king was unable to sleep, so he asked for the book containing the historical records to be brought. As the records were being read in the king's presence, it was found written that Mordecai had disclosed that Bigthena and Tirish, two of the king's eunuchs who guarded the entrance, had plotted to assassinate King Ahasuerus. The king asked, What great honor was bestowed on Mordecai because of this? The king's attendants who served him responded, not a thing was done for him. Then the king said, Who is that in the courtyard? Now Haman had come to the outer courtyard of the palace to suggest that the king hang Mordecai on the gallows that he had constructed for him. The king's attendants said to him, It is Haman who is standing in the courtyard. The king said, Let him enter. So Haman came in, and the king said to him, What should be done for the man whom the king wishes to honor? Haman thought to himself, Who is it that the king would want to honor more than me? So Haman said to the king, For the man whom the king wishes to honor, let them bring royal attire which the king himself has worn, and a horse on which the king himself has ridden, one bearing the royal insignia. Then let this clothing and this horse be given to one of the king's noble officials. Let him then clothe the man whom the king wishes to honor, and let him lead him about through the plaza of the city on the horse, calling before him, So shall it be done to the man whom the king wishes to honor. The king then said to Haman, Go quickly, take the clothing and the horse, just as you have described, and do as you just indicated to Mordecai the Jew who sits at the king's gate. Don't neglect a single thing of all that you have said. So Haman took the clothing and the horse, and he clothed Mordecai, he led him about on the horse throughout the plaza of the city, calling before him, So shall it be done to the man whom the king wishes to honor. Then Mordecai again sat at the king's gate, while Haman hurried away to his home, 
mournful and with a veil over his head. Haman then related to his wife Zeresh and to all his friends everything that had happened to him. These wise men along with his wife Zeresh said to him, If indeed this Mordecai before whom you have begun to fall is Jewish, you will not prevail against him. No, you will surely fall before him. While they were still speaking with him, the king's eunuchs arrived. They quickly brought Haman to the banquet that Esther had prepared. God, so much wisdom in the book of Esther. How to charm your husband, definitely through his stomach. <laughs> um, dealing with ego and the consequences thereof. And we're going to see some way more serious consequences here very soon. And and then probably the most important, obviously, is at the end where non-believers are able to see your power, God. Again, one of my favorite things about this uh, particular book in the Bible is it doesn't mention you by name anywhere in it. Yet it's one of the most powerful stories talking about your sovereignty and your control um, of your people in this world that you created. It's, it's absolutely amazing. And so we see at the end when Haman is all mortified and embarrassed and he's with his friends and his wife and they're like dude no you need to stop because he has somebody Mordecai has somebody powerful watching over him um, referring to obviously you God and trying to warn him that what he's going up against isn't just a mere mortal but he's going up against the God of the universe and God I I thank you so much for reigning sovereign in this world, for being in control. I fully realize that because you created us, that doesn't mean that you need to lovingly take care of us and watch over us and want what's best for us. You could have created us and just set up a, a giant dollhouse scenario where we go about destroying ourselves, which we do pretty well on our own anyways, but you didn't. You remain consistently in love with us and we don't get to experience relationships like that down here on earth uh, we have people who love us and people who we might have a relationship with for the rest of our lives but to have somebody always be in love with us and wanting what is best for us at any given time we don't have that um we're human beings. We don't understand how to do that because at some point our ego gets in the way and we can't fully care about somebody without letting some of what we think is important come into play. Boy, what a different world this would be if we could actually love each other like you love us. And I know we try, but this last couple sentences is such a big idea that if we are obedient and if we are faithful, you will not only take care of us in those situations and want what is best for us, but it will also be used to glorify you to non-believers in the hopes that, that you will choose them and their heart will choose you and they will be able to have a relationship with you. God, I pray to you almost every day that my life is a reflection of you, that people can look into my world and see what you do in my life and how you have dramatically changed my life and my situation and my heart. I hope that they look into my world and see your power and your sovereignty. I know they can easily look into my life and see your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. God, I came from such a horrid place of sin and it doesn't mean I don't still sin every single day, but uh, Thankfully, you've allowed me to make different choices now. God, I ask that you continue to guide our path. That our actions and our words and our thoughts and what goes on in our heart and our head would always be honoring to you. And that the people watching us would always be able to look at our lives and go, Wow, I'm definitely not going up against that because of their God. And hmm, maybe I should find out more about that God that's taking such good care of Janelle, protecting her so well, allowing her to grow in his word, and who obviously loves her more than she can ever imagine. 
God, I only pray that my life is used for that, used to glorify you and reflect your sovereignty. In your son's name I pray, amen.